morning. Welcome to Feast at Home. This is your builder brother, Audi Villaraza. We're so blessed to be with you. Thank you for allowing us to be part of your Sunday ritual. Thank you for allowing us to visit your home every single Sunday. We're going to have a blast today, okay? We are now on Talk 11. I'm going now to the serious part of this message, okay? We are now on Talk 11 of our beautiful, beautiful series. Again, remember that last Sunday we delivered a special talk about praying. I, I wonder if that blessed you. It was such a powerful, powerful message where we actually talked about, you know, graduating from Santa, how to pray when your prayers are not being answered by God. And we said that, that you know, God answers in His own time and God answers a prayer where you say, not my will, but yours be done, Father. That's a beautiful prayer to pray every single time that you would continue to trust in Jesus and to trust in God the Father and trust in the Holy Spirit. But anyway, today we're going back to the previous series that we've had, Best Preaching Ever. And you are gonna love the title for today. It's short and sweet, okay? The title for today is Cotton Candy. <laughs> That's right. I, I'm sure you guys are wondering, what is this all about? Well, you're going to find out in a few moments, okay? But for now, let me give you, let, me, let us pray our favorite family prayer, all right? Let's come in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Everybody just stretch your hands from wherever you are, except when you are driving, of course, and say this with me. Today, I receive all of God's love for me. Today, I open myself to the unbounded love limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today, I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today, I open myself to God's word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today, I proclaim that I'm God's beloved. I'm God's servant, and I am God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody stretch your hands and lift your hands in honor of God's word and let's let's sing. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Turn to Matthew chapter 6. We're finished with Matthew chapter 5. We're now entering into a new chapter of our life. Matthew chapter 6. It's going to be very long, but I promise you it's going to be good. So chapter 6, verse 1. Let's read together. It, it says, Watch out. Don't do your good deeds publicly to be admired by others, for you will lose the reward from your Father in heaven. Verse 2, when you give to someone in need, don't do as the hypocrites do, where they blow their trumpets in the synagogues and streets to call attention to their acts of charity. I tell you the truth, Jesus says, they have received all the reward that they will ever get. But when you give to someone in need, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Give your gifts in private and your Father who sees everything will reward you. And then verse 5, when you pray, don't don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly on street corners and in the synagogues where everyone can see them. I tell you the truth, that is all the reward that they will ever get. But when you pray, go away by yourself. Shut the door behind you and pray to the Father in private. Then your Father, who sees everything, will reward you. When you pray, don't babble on and on as the Gentiles do. They think like their prayers are answered merely by repeating the words again and again. Don't be like them, for your Father knows exactly what you need even before you ask Him. And when you fast, don't make it obvious as the hypocrites do, for they try to look miserable and disheveled so people will admire them for their fasting. I tell you the truth, that is the only reward that they will ever get. But when you fast, comb your hair and wash your face, brush your teeth even, then no one will notice what you, that you are fasting except your father who knows what you do in private and your father who sees everything will reward you. That's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful piece of scripture. You know, this is what I love about the Bible, is that you can take a text that's so old. It may have been written centuries ago, but you know what? It's still true today. It's still so relevant today. And one of the things that really resonated with me in this piece of scripture is when Matthew said that we have a habit of blowing our trumpets to attract attention. Did you know that we still have a common modern day trumpet 
that we still blow to attract attention. What is that trumpet called? It's called social media, right? Social media is the trumpet that we still blow today to attract attention, to tell people just how amazing and awesome our life is. Because today it's all about attracting attention, right? That's the poison that we have today. It's, we're all what we call attention seekers. We want all the eyes on what we do, on what we eat, on what we wear, on what we listen to, on what we watch, on what we read. It's all about getting the attention for ourselves. It's about how many likes you got on that post. How many people followed you right after? We want the attention. And so what, what, what Matthew was saying here is that there's a danger. There's a danger. How do, you, how do you separate now? How do you draw the line between wanting attention in the right way and in the wrong way? How do we live in a day and age where it's so easy to fall into that trap of seeking attention? Okay, let me tell you a very practical example. For the last three months, our feasts all over the world, we have been helping a lot of people. Like for example, we have helped a lot of hospitals by giving them PPEs, protective equipment. We have fed a lot of hungry people. We have sheltered a lot of homeless people. You know, and we've, you've seen this. We have been using the hashtag, the feasts, little acts of love. Google it, okay? Search, search for, for that hashtag. You will see the different good deeds that we have been doing, okay? In fact, some of you have also been doing things on your own. God bless you for that. But, but then after reading this verse, actually, you will be surprised that from time to time, people will give negative comments about the good things that you post online. Have you ever encountered that when people made some comments? You know, why do you have to post the good things that you do? Why don't you just do it in private, just like that verse said? In fact, some people might even use the one that they find in verse 3, where, where Jesus says, don't show your left hand what your right hand is doing. So if you do a good deed, do it in private. So your heavenly father will reward you in private, right? So if we take that context, it would mean that if we shared, whenever we would share anything online about the good that we do, it, meant, it means that it's wrong. It means that it's bad, right? Here's, here's the thing, okay? Whenever you encounter something like this in scripture that might confuse you, this key principle will help you, okay? Scripture interprets scripture. What you need to do is you need to look for other similar pieces of scripture that's almost similar and then you put them together to get a message because there's a message here, okay? Let me give you the example. If you backtrack, in fact, a few cha uh, one chapter before this in... Uh, in Matthew chapter 5, it's Matthew says here, um, in Matthew chapter 5 verse, where is it? Verse 16, Jesus also says, in the same way, again, he says, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. But here in verse 16 of chapter 5, he says, let your good deeds shine for all to see, so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. So you see, you've got one verse that says this, you've got another verse that says this, but when you put together those two verses, you know the deeper message of Jesus is that, is that he's more concerned about your motives. He's more concerned about your intentions. What is your intention when you're doing this? Is your intention to, 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 to give yourself glory or is your, is your intention to give God the glory? In other words, is your intention to attract attention? Okay, here's the truth. Even if you do the right thing, but for the wrong reasons, it will still be the wrong thing. That's the truth. It's all about your intention, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Are you guys excited yet? All right, let's pray, everybody, before Brother Bo comes in. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful word. And right now, Lord, we just ask you to purify our intentions, to cleanse us from any wrong motive that might be lodged in, in our hearts. And we ask you, Lord, to direct us to the right path. We want to have life with you. We want to experience, Lord, this wisdom that you're going to pour out into our heads and into our souls today. So we're wide open, Jesus. Walk in. Speak to us in a mighty way. In the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus, we pray. If you want to believe in that prayer, just say amen. Amen. One more time, everybody, lift your hands and let's just sing one more time. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Bless you. This is Bo Sanchez. I am so happy to be able to be with you today. And I'm praying that as you listen to this 
powerful word. The blessings of God will flow to you and your family and to your home like a river, like a river, just blessing every area of your life. That's my prayer right now in Jesus' name. So are you ready to receive the word? Here it is. Here's God's beautiful message to you. God is your greatest reward. And if there's somebody beside you, tap that person and tell that person, God is your greatest reward. All right, we begin. I begin with this spiritual truth, universal truth. We all want to be loved. We all desire to be loved. We do. We want to be affirmed. We want to be approved. We want to be accepted. We want to be liked. And you know that that's normal. That is absolutely normal. I, you know, I, I just think of all the men that I have spoken to that have this deep heart wound because their own fathers, they long for their fathers to tell them to their faces, I'm proud of you, my son. But those words never came. I'm thinking of all the women that I have met who have that heart wound, deep heart wound, because they long for their mother to say, I'm proud of you, my daughter. But those words never came. Um, I was doing youth ministry a long, long time ago. Maybe, maybe when? Maybe some 750 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it feels that long. But I can still picture the faces of these young people when they came to me and crying. And, and, and they're saying, Brother Bo, please talk to my mom. Please talk to my dad. I said, why? And these, these teenagers will tell me, because every time my mom talks to me, she's scolding me. Every time, every time she talks to me, I'm doing something wrong. And she never would talk to me and tell me that I'm doing something right. There was this one girl, I, I remember, she, she was just, her tears welling up, you know, streaming down her cheeks. And she, she told me, Brother Bo, parang, parang sa tingin ng nanay ko, in the eyes of my mom, I'm just one big walking mistake. And, and I, I would, my heart would just get crushed because these kids, they're longing for, for the love of their parents. And so just want you to know that it's normal. It's God-given. This is how we're made. You know, it's almost like this. If your body needs food, your soul needs love. And think about it. Think with me that our bodies, we get sick. Our bodies get sick, not because usually, not because of the lack of food, but because of the wrong kind of food. Ah, so what am I going to talk about today? What if our souls are sick because we're pursuing the wrong kind of love? Mm. So let me begin by telling you the story of a seven-year-old boy by the name of Picky Ricky. Picky Ricky was someone who... Oh, his name comes from the fact that he was a picky eater and his mother would have such a difficult time feeding him. Like every meal was the war of our Megadon. You know, like, like, uh, uh, yeah, it, it was, it was a battle. It was like, you know, there was a lot of crying and pleading and bribing and bargaining. You know, if you eat this spinach, you will have ice cream. And so, man, the, you know, Picky Ricky didn't like normal food at all. So was Picky, uh, Picky Ricky, Picky, <laughs> was Picky Ricky um, a, uh, a thin guy? No, he was actually huge. He was, he had, no, he, because he loved sweets. Like every morning he would wolf down bowls of milk and sugary cereals. And then in his school bag, there was caramel bars, etc. you know, jelly beans. And then, and then he would, he would just, eat, you know, cookies and stuff. And when he would be going home from school, people would see him with this big pink ball of cotton candy. And he, he loved, that was his favorite food. Like, like he would eat that thing. He could eat that the whole day. He just loved it, cotton candy. So, Picky Ricky, where, where, what, am I, what am I driving at? Um, it's almost like this, that the reason why he was not eating normal food was because he was already full. Because there are two kinds of physical hungers. You've got your stomach hunger, and then you have your um, cellular hunger, 
What does that mean? Your stomach hunger. Bicky Ricky, you know, he, he ate all this sweet stuff and his, he didn't have stomach hunger. It was satisfied. But because it was satisfied, his cellular hunger, down to the cellular level of his body, they were hungering for, for vitamins and minerals and enzymes and, and, and all the good stuff. And they, he was not hungry for that. He could not eat that because the, the stomach hunger was satisfied. And I want to make that as an analogy for our spiritual life because... There is such a thing in our souls, you know, we have what you call an emotional hunger and a spiritual hunger. And so emotional hunger is, you know, we want people to like us. Spiritual hunger is our hunger for real love. That's why when you get 683 likes in Facebook, um, you're you're happy, you know. When you get heart emoticons, you know, flooding to your cell phone, you whoa, you know, you feel good. Why? Emotional hunger. But spiritual hunger, when you when you long for real love, at the end of the day, only God can give you real love. Only God. No, no one. Only He can love you permanently, unconditionally, and eternally. Now, here's the problem. When your emotional hunger is f satisfied with public applause, with the cotton candy of public applause, you no longer are driven towards God. What happens, it gets numbed, and, and you'll just look for that cotton candy again and again and again. So today, I'm going to ask you three tough questions. Now, I know I could talk about, you know, the three religious activities that Jesus talked about today, which was giving and praying and fasting. But I think they're just a backdrop to his central message. And, and because any religious activity we could use to gain public applause so that people will like us, you know, but that, that's the point of the story. So here's the three tough questions. I hope you're ready. They're really tough. Number one, here we go. Are you a Christian actor or a Jesus follower? You know, because if you and I do religious activities so that we get liked, so that we get approved, so that we get, you know, praised, Jesus called us hypocrites. Hypocrites. Where does that word come from? In Greek, it's hypocrite, and it's exactly, you know, the same root word for the for that actor in a Greek play, in an ancient Greek play, that was wearing this big mask. In ancient Greece, they had they had plays, they had theaters, and and uh, I'll give you a little trivia that all Greek actors were all men. That there was no women. So if there's a female role in a in a Greek play, it was a guy who was who was playing that role, and he was just wearing the mask, a huge mask of of, of a woman, and. It's sad, you know, here's, here's my big, big question. I mean, it's sad when you just wear a mask in real life, pretending to be religious so that people will like you, you know, doing this religious thing so that people will appreciate you. Um, question, are you wearing a mask so people will like you? And it is sad because if people like you wearing a mask, they don't really like you. They just like the mask that you're wearing. And what should you do? What's the solution? The solution is to come to God as is, where is, without any mask, and let God heal you. So here's the second question. Are you ready? Who do you want to give you rewards? What am I talking about? Well, um, there's a universal principle that says that for every action causes a reaction. In the spiritual realm, we, we say it a little bit differently. We reap what we sow. Um, that's true. So there are such things as rewards. But the big question is, from whom do you want to receive rewards? Um, you, you can, because if, if you go through the passages, you find a pattern. And, and let's read it together, okay? So it says here in verse 4, Give your gifts in private, and your Father who sees everything will reward you. So when you give, 
God will reward you. We go to verse 6. But when you pray, go away by yourself, shut the door behind you, and pray to your Father in private. Then your Father who sees everything will reward you. And then it says again in verse 18. There, then no one will notice that you are fasting except your Father who knows what you do in private. And then he says it again. And your Father who sees everything will reward you. So you and I have a choice. What's the choice? Option one, do you want people to reward you? Or number two, option two, do you want God to reward you? I don't know about you, but I want God to reward me. Because, because man's rewards are fleeting and faulty and feeble but God's rewards are forever. That, that's, that's what I want. And so, um, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share with you two stories. I'm going like, to close my part of the message with two stories. And, and the first one is this. I was in a, this was years, 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 years ago. I was doing a little fundraising event. And we were just about maybe 30 people there. And it was so informal that when in, in my little talk, I was, I was just thanking everybody. I didn't have a list of donors in front of me. I just, you know, when I saw, when I would see a face, I'd say, hey, thank you so much. For, and, and I see another guy. Thank you so much. I see another woman. Thank you so much for, you know, that this was so informal. It was just like, you know, banter and really thanking, for, thanking them for all their generosity. When I sat down, my friend who was beside me whispered to my ear, Brother Bo, one of your donors is, is uh, she's offended, got offended by you. I overheard. And I said, why? And, and my friend told me, because you mentioned people before her and these people gave lesser than her and she wanted to be mentioned first. And I said, oh, for some people, billing is an issue and so it would have been very easy for me to just look down on that and look down at her and say wow this woman is has issues has problems you know that but i've come to learn that what she was feeling was really something that was in me as well you know i i've, I've come to realize not to judge people because the very thing i'm judging is that very thing that's within me i'm telling you because I too feel the desire to lift up my name. Except that as the years went by, I've, whenever I feel that desire to lift up my name, I'd rather lift up the name of Jesus. Let me tell you why. Because when I lift up my name and I'm succeeded, I've succeeded to lift up my name, I feel empty. It's because it doesn't fill up my spiritual need, just my emotional need. I'm eating the cotton candy of public applause. Which brings me to my second story. And this is an embarrassing story. One day, I gave what I felt was a huge, crazy amount to God. And uh, yeah, just at least in my mind, it was big. <laughs> it was, And here's what I noticed. In the following weeks after that event of giving that crazy amount to God, I had this desire, this urge, that whenever I was with my close friends, I wanted to slip into the conversation, the exact figure, the exact amount I gave. Um, and the reason in my mind I was justifying this desire to tell people about how much I gave and the exact figure is because, because you know, people will say, uh, um, Oh, Bo is such a generous guy. I should also give in the same way. I wanted to set an example so that people will give in the same sacrificial way. But if I, if I was to be honest about it, the real reason was I wanted people to like me. And I had to really use all my strength to shut my mouth. You know, during those times when I had this urge to tell them um, what I did, I just, man, it was difficult, but I, but I did shut my mouth. And, you know, because I did not satisfy my emotional hunger for public praise, my spiritual hunger took over and it drove me towards God. And in the arms of God, my soul, my agitated soul received more peace. 
And I began to pray, Lord, you are my greatest reward. And if I have you, I have everything. And it was so beautiful. So that's what happens when you say no to your desire for public praise. When, when you say no to your desire to lift up your name, your, your, that, that spirit will hunger, becomes alive. And then you receive your real spiritual food, which is the love of God. God is your greatest reward. Say that with me. God is my greatest reward. Say that again. God is my greatest reward. Hi again, everybody. Thank you, by the way, Brother Bo, for another wonderful message. I hope that all of our viewers today, all of our attendees are picking up a thing or two from our valuable lesson. But hey, we're not done yet because I'm still going to give you the third question, okay? What kind of reward do you want to receive? Let me give you a quick analogy. I want you to imagine this with me for a moment. Just try to imagine, okay, that you've got a lot of unpaid bills right now. You've got a lot of debt that's stacked up. You owe a lot of people some money. In fact, I'm imagining that a lot of people don't even have to try very hard to imagine this because this is the reality today, right? And so anyway, one day you decide that out of a whim, you are going to buy a lottery ticket. So you go ahead and purchase that lottery ticket and then the following week you find out that by some miracle you actually won the lottery. The cash price, a hundred million pesos. Woo! Is that money going to make you happy? hundred million pesos, will that make you happy? You better be crazy not to say yes to that, right? Because that's a lot of money that will be used to pay off your bill and then some more. That you can, you can use to bless other people. So yes, you will be happy with that money. And so anyway, the next day, you go to the lottery office and then you're bringing the winning lottery ticket and you present it and people are like, congratulations, sir. You won a hundred million pesos. And then the big boss comes up from behind you, taps you on the shoulder and says, you know what, sir? Because of all the paperwork, because of all the documentation that we still need to file, you actually need to come back after 90 days before you can collect the money. And you're like, what? That's like three months from now. I thought I was going to walk out of this place a multimillionaire. But you know what? You're happy. You want a million pesos, okay? You're, you're happy, but you're a little disappointed. And so on your way out, you meet this man sharply dressed and you tell your problems to this guy. And the guy is like, you know what, brother? I am going to be a brother to you today. I am going to go out on a limb and I'm going to do you a big favor, all right? In exchange for that winning lottery ticket, here's what I'm going to do for you, okay? Again, this is a favor from me to you. I'm going to give you right now, right this very second, you don't need to wait 90 days. You don't need to wait three months. Right this very second, I am going to give you one million pesos. And so he opens his briefcase and lo and behold, a million pesos in the briefcase. And he's like, you know what? You can take this home today. You can get a good night's rest tonight, you know, because the creditors are going to stop from calling you, from knocking on your door, from bugging you. You get to go home a millionaire. And all you got to do is simply just sign this piece of paper that says that you are relinquishing this winning lottery ticket to me. So my question for you today is, are you going to do it? Are you going to exchange the winning lottery ticket, 1 million pesos, for the 1 million pesos that's ready right now that you can take home? Yes or no? <laughs> it's, a, it's not a hard question, right? You would be crazy to exchange a hundred million for one million to, ch to exchange something of great value for something of lesser value. But you know what, my dear friends? We say yes to that deal every single day. How? Whenever we exchange God's eternal rewards for man's earthly reward. That's right. Whenever we go for the likes and the applause of man and we exchange God's love in our life, that's what happens. We exchange something of real value for something of fake value. Let me tell you this story, okay? Some of you know this already that I started a personal vlog uh, and I called it Audibles, right? Some of you might have even watched a few episodes here and there. Thank you for subscribing to my YouTube channel, by the way. But anyway, the main intention of my vlog was very simple. I wanted to use this vlog as a platform to, to bless the people, you know, to inspire people, to read the Bible, to read the gospel, to reflect also. I was sharing my personal reflections and so to speak, I, I, in short, I was sharing you know, personal messages that 
I would, I would not be able to share, you know, in our regular feast. That was the intention. And so it started off very well. But you know what? Some of you might have noticed this, that I stopped filming for many months now. I stopped putting out material. I stopped posting. And I've never shared this before. And I'm only sharing this with you now because I believe that this is a safe space, okay? The vlog started out very well. It got very good feedback from people. In fact, I, I want to thank you for encouraging me, for affirming me. But you see, again, this is my personal journey that I noticed that little by little, something in me was changing. My heart was changing. My intentions and my motivation was changing because it, it became more and more about garnering likes and it became less and less about sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. All of a sudden, I noticed that Every single day, whenever I would post, I would check 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour. I would check how many views that post got, how many people commented, the kinds of comment that came into that, into that post. And then I would reply to each comment. I would like their comment. And so it became more about people liking, people viewing, people following me. And it became less and less about really inspiring people and sharing God's love to them. So my heart changed. And so that's when I knew that I needed to stop. So since, since then, I stopped, you know, I, 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 I stopped putting out material. And ever since then, I started praying to the Lord, Lord, refine my heart. Lord, purify my intentions. Lord, simply just put me back to the same place, that same heart that, that I had when I started out. You know, let me share with you one of the prayers that has helped me in this journey. It comes from the book of Psalm and it says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. You know, that's a beautiful prayer to have. To simply come before God and ask God, Lord, help me search within me and look for anything that might be offensive to you. And if there's anything that's offensive to you, Lord, I ask you to uproot it, to refine it, to change it. Put me back into that same place, that same heart. When I first started doing this, my intention was clean, Lord. Because you know what? Sometimes we may start off with a good intention, but along the way, we get lost. And if you look deep within, you might not like what you see. You might realize that it's no longer for God's glory, but it's for your own personal glory. You need to always ask yourself this question. Is my intention to bless or is my intention to brag? Is my intention to bless or is my intention to boast? Because you see, there is a huge difference between blessing and bragging, blessing and boasting. And one way that you can determine whether your intention is to bless or brag is simply, again, to ask the simple question, am I seeking praise or am I sending praise? praise. You see, it's all about the direction of where the praise goes to. If the praise goes to you, well, simple. You're seeking praise. It's for your own glory. But when you are sending praise, you're giving it to the Lord, you are blessing because your, 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 your intentions are to bless people. Your intention is to praise God. That's the huge difference. That's why it's very important that your heart always needs to be in the right place. And long term, you got to look at this long term because again, over over time, your intentions change. You got to look deep within you and ask yourself, am I doing this to bless people or am I doing it because I want to brag to people? Because I really believe this, my dear friends, that there is a bragger that's living inside of you and me. I remember the story of Jun Jun who Jun Jun one day comes home from school and then brags to his mom and he's like, Mom, I am the smartest and wisest kid in the class because I am the only student who was able to answer the question of the teacher. None of my classmates were able to answer the question. And the mom is like, oh my gosh, my son is so smart. By the way, son, what was the answer? to the question. And, and Junjun is like, Mom, the, the answer was so simple. I only needed to raise my hand and say, me, me, that's it. And the mom's like, the answer was me. Um, Junjun, what was the question in the first place? And Junjun is like, oh, Mom, the question was so simple. The teacher calls the class and she says, class, who among you did not do the assignment for today? And I'm like, me. <laughs> I believe this, my dear friends, that there is a bragger that's living inside you and me. That's right. Whether you admit it or not, that's the person 
who, who wants the applause. He's the person living inside of you who wants the adulation. She's the person living inside of you who wants the attention. There's a bragger inside you and me. And if we are able to overcome the bragger that's living inside of us, we simply need to know what the bragger wants. And one of the things, one of the greatest things that I believe that the bragger always wants is the reward. The reward. The bragger wants the adulation. The bragger wants the attention. The bragger wants the applause. In other words, the bragger wants the reward. But what the bragger doesn't know and what you and I both know now is that there are two kinds of rewards. There's the earthly reward, but there is also the eternal reward. And I don't know about you, but I want the eternal reward. I want the kind of reward that cannot be consumed by moths. The one that cannot be destroyed by fire. The kind of reward that is more precious than a thousand likes. It's more, it's more valuable than a million heart emoticons. I want the love of God. I want the eternal reward of God. How many of you want God's eternal reward? You want God's eternal reward? You want God's um, um, heavenly reward? So simply do this. Never exchange God's heavenly reward for man's earthly reward. Don't ever do it. Don't ever go for, don't ever exchange, you know, God's real love for man's temporary love because it's limited. You know, God's love for you is limitless. So stop working for the applause of humans and instead work for the applause of heaven. Work for the praises of God. That's right. Let me close with this last verse, okay? This is coming from, from 2 Corinthians chapter 11. It's beautiful, okay? 11 verse 30, Paul says this. Paul says, If I must boast, I would rather boast about the things that show how weak I am. And then he follows this up in, verse, in, in chapter 12 verse 9. He says, Each time Jesus says, My grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. And so Paul says this, So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. You see, my dear friends, that is the ultimate reward. The ultimate reward is that Christ's power may rest in you and me, that Jesus Christ himself would rest in you, that Jesus himself would live in you. That's the greatest reward. The reward is Jesus himself. God is the greatest reward. Can you tell that to yourself right now? Say that with me. God is my greatest reward. Amen. I hope that this message blessed you today, everybody. If I, if I can just invite you, we're going to respond to this message in a few moments. But let's just pray. Let's just come into God's presence right now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, you are all that we want in our life. You are all that we need. You are the prize. You are the portion. You are the treasure. You are the one who is of great value. And Father, we want you more than what the world offers. We want what you offer to us, Jesus. We open our hearts. We open our lives to you in this very moment, receiving the permanent love of God. Only that will make us happy, Jesus. Nothing else in this world will make us happy. So fill us up today, Lord. You are all that we need. You are more than enough in our life. In Jesus' name, amen.